Inside this skull, how many brains do you think you have? I bet your answer is going to be one. Actually, you have three different brains existing inside this one skull, inside your head. Surprise. It turns out they all work together and they developed from the time you were a little tiny embryo into a human being. So the three brains that we're talking about, the primitive brain, which is deep inside, the cortical brain, which is called the neocortex, which is up top, and then back here and down low, the cerebellum. Now, each of them has a unique function, and it's important to have all three of them to live well. And dementia can ultimately affect all of them, but in very unique ways. So let's go over what these three brains do and why they're important to have and how you use them. So we're going to start with the primitive brain. Now the primitive brain is deep inside and it involves life keeping you alive. Now to do that, it has to connect up to systems that allow you to get data in, but it also has to respond in the moment, whether you're awake, whether you're asleep. It includes parts of your brain like what controls your breathing and what controls your heartbeat. It works on controlling lots of things. And there are some special parts, the hippocampal areas, which allow you to learn and remember, keep up with how to get from place to place, and keep up with time. How long has it been since? It also involves your amygdala, which is a part of your brain in the primitive area that is designed to keep you alive. Its purpose, its value is to notice threats and react to them. Its purpose and value is to help you get your needs met so you can stay alive. Its purpose and value is to help you find a reason to stay alive, pleasure in being alive. In other words, if you don't find any pleasure in being alive, nothing matters. You will cease to thrive and you will not survive. So it turns out it's really important to find something that makes life worth living for survival. Also included in this are some thalamic connections. Now those thalamic connections are what allow you to control blood pressure, blood sugar, heart rate, respiratory rate. It also controls all the hormone connections. So adrenaline, cortisol, the idea of how your brain gets chemicals to work with come from these thalamic connections. And mm, then there's connections up into the cortical brain, neocortex. You've got four lobes, two sides, but four essential lobes. The frontal, prefrontal, the parietal, and that's sensation and movement. This is the thinking brain. This is the feeling and moving. Sensation in, and movement out. It's the wiring between your body and your brain. Back here, we have the occipital. That's what processes everything you see. And right here above your ears, temporal lobes. Everything auditory is processed in those lobes. And across the middle is wiring. Because you have to have one side of your brain talking to the other side of your brain so that you work as you. And that wiring across the middle connects the two hemispheres. Now, there's one more brain, and it's back here and it's low, and it's called the cerebellum, otherwise known as the little brain. And that little brain is actually the one that takes over once you learn how to do things. So once you learn stuff, your cerebellum is now in charge of just doing the stuff you already know how to do with a rhythm, so you don't have to think about it anymore. You can focus now on learning new things. So once you learn how to stand up and walk, you need to focus on walking anymore. You can focus on what you're seeing while you're walking. You can start to focus on how you use your hands. Once you learn how to use your hands to do something, you don't need to focus on your hands doing things anymore. You can focus on what's out there that you want to go pick up. So it turns out that these three brains work in unison. Um, they each have their job. They each do their part. And it's only when we start developing dementia 
that suddenly the primitive brain feels threatened in times when it shouldn't, and the thinking brain cannot think like it used to, and the sensory part of what I'm feeling is overwhelming, and I'm in pain, and yet I don't know why she's in pain, because she's not doing anything that should be hurting. Well, my brain is misunderstanding what's going on. So as someone who's trying to support someone living with dementia, <laughs> you're going to want to learn a lot more about how brains work and how brains stop working so that you can get yours to work for you and you can recognize when somebody you care about is not using theirs in the way they used to because it's not working like it used to. That's what we're going to be digging into. But for right now, this understanding that you have three different brains that are trying to figure out how to live life and that you have your eyes, your ears, your sense of taste, your sense of smell, your sense of movement and balance. That's the data that comes in. And now you've got to figure out what to do with it. But you're on the outside. So you're going to be trying to figure this out. And you can't even see from the inside what it's like. Whew. I think you can do it. But I also think you may need some help and some support because this is not something that's easy to figure out on your own. That's why we're providing this.